Summary of Hostage at the Table How Leaders Can Overcome Conflict, Influence Others, and Raise Performance By George Colreza Don't be held hostage The idea of being held hostage by a desperate criminal who is brandishing a gun or knife is beyond frightening. In fact, most people can't even imagine the sheer terror this situation would evoke. You may even have asked yourself how you would react under such circumstances. Actually, many folks are not even aware that their bosses, co-workers, circumstances or emotions are holding them hostage every day. Like real captives, they may feel weak, helpless and trapped. Consider how you react when an inconsiderate driver tailgates you or the airline loses your luggage. Chances are that you're irritated, aggravated or downright angry, feelings that stay with you for a while and determine your behavior. The inability to release a negative, harmful mindset or to get out of being manipulated, by someone else or by your feelings, means you're a hostage. Human reactions to stressful situations are largely biological. Neurologist Paul McLean has identified three distinct parts of the brain, the reptilian brain, the limbic system and the neocortex. The fight-or-flight instinct lives in the reptilian brain, which only cares about survival. The limbic system is the home of emotions and feelings. The neocortex is where people think, the area of the brain that enables humans to overcome the messages of the reptilian brain and limbic system. With practice, people can control their emotional responses and react more productively. The power of the mind. People who have accomplished extraordinary athletic feats report that instead of focusing on pain, discomfort or misery, they concentrated on the outcome. Instead of stopping at the 20-mile mark because of leg cramps, the marathoner envisions crossing the finish line. Instead of climbing into the boat, the exhausted English Channel swimmer pictures reaching the shore and walking out of the water to the sound of loud cheering. Medical students whose lives are consumed by studying and hard work think about receiving their degrees, and not about their extreme fatigue. Negative thinking victimizes many people. That's the voice in your head that says you don't think the boss will promote you. People tend to become hostages to their own pessimism, more often than not, that leads to a negative outcome. Imagine walking into the office on Monday morning well-rested and looking forward to a productive week. Fifteen minutes later, you've gotten four phone calls, a dozen emails and a reminder that you're meeting a difficult client at 10 a.m. All of a sudden, your peaceful world has been disrupted and your attention is fragmented. But you can resist. Effective leaders do not allow themselves to be taken hostage by their environment or by demands on their time. They stay focused and positive. Often, your psychological history determines your self-fulfilling prophesies, positive or negative. If your parents discouraged you from taking risks, then you are highly unlikely to step out of your comfort zone and accept new challenges. However, you can disrupt this thought process. You do not have to be held hostage by your negativity. Visualization is one way to condition your mind to focus on the positive. Many athletes use this technique. Mentally, the relief pitcher has already struck the batter out before he even enters the game. The tennis player has already made the ace before she lifts her racket. You can apply visualization in the workplace as well. If you're scheduled to make an important presentation to the executive board, imagine everyone sitting around the conference table listening to you intently. Imagine the handshakes and plaudits you'll receive afterward. Think of your warm feelings of self-satisfaction. In a larger sense, successful companies invariably create and sustain an overall vision that unites their workers on an emotional level. Southwest Airline employees embrace the corporate vision of superior customer service. Japanese auto workers take pride in producing cars that have a solid reputation for performance and reliability. Bonding, grieving, and going forward. Business leaders sometimes are so focused on results they tend to ignore a vital part of success. They spend their energy devising strategies and creating flow charts while ignoring opportunities to interact with their people. Managers and executives who prefer to spend their time poring over printouts instead of dealing with human beings clearly could be afraid of relationships. Those fears hold them hostage. People who cannot bond can trace this deficiency to past relationships or situations. 
the bonding cycle, a component of every relationship, consists of four stages. 1. Attachment. Many scientific studies have shown that infants who are deprived of human contact will have problems later in life. The newborn being cuddled by his or her parents understands that the world is safe and secure. This attachment will allow the baby to grow and explore the environment without the fear of abandonment. 2. Bonding. Bonding is a powerful experience for the manager and the employee. Staff members who are unable to bond with their immediate supervisors, either to connect on a personal or emotional level, may find it difficult to be enthusiastic about work. They may use more sick days, or take out their frustrations on customers or co-workers. 3. Separation, an inevitable part of life, separation occurs in every relationship. Spouses die, children go off to college and people relocate to advance their careers. Separation leads to the final and crucial stage of the bonding cycle. 4. Grieving, people who experience loss must accept that reality and deal with their emotions. They must grieve in order to move forward. A person who returns to his workplace and threatens to harm his former colleagues because he was fired is stuck in his grief. A long-time employee who is passed over for a promotion and remains bitter can't extricate herself from disappointment and sadness. Bonding is a crucial element of workplace teamwork. Team members who share mutual respect enjoy the challenges and rewards of working together. They trust each other and express their concerns without fear of retribution. They are careful to offer constructive criticism and not simply complain. Dynamic leaders work to maximize their team's performance and not to control the members or the environment. Self-esteem and a secure base. Individuals with high self-esteem do not fear responsibility. They welcome challenges. They are optimistic by nature and capable of finding creative solutions. Moreover, they do not allow adversity to deliver a crushing blow. Their self-respect and positive outlook enables them to weather life's disappointments. People with low self-esteem are never satisfied with themselves. Even as they strive for perfectionism, they require constant reassurance. Because they are insecure, no amount of positive feedback fills the deficit they feel inside. However, they can boost their self-esteem by accepting things they cannot change and asking for help and guidance. People who experience a complete bonding cycle are likely to feel secure and have high self-esteem. Parents who offer positive reinforcement and convey the message that anything is possible plant the seeds for a productive adulthood. Such parents become secure bases for their children. A secure base is a person, objective or even an object that anchors an individual and provides strength and confidence. Your secure base may be your spouse, parents, boss, home, religion, passionate hobby, volunteer work, or some other mix of people and support systems. Take Bob, who was a loner, except for his dog, Buster. One day, Buster eluded Bob and ran onto the road, where a car killed him. Distraught, Grief-stricken and filled with self-blame, Bob ran to Buster's body in distress. Three adolescent boys goaded Bob and tried to yank Buster away. Enraged, Bob pulled a gun and locked the kids in his house. Negotiators realized that Bob felt he had nothing left to lose, since Buster, his secure base, he was gone. But they also thought Bob did not really wish to kill the boys, though the standoff lasted 18 hours. Bob threw out the phones the SWAT team put at his door, so a negotiator tried to toss a rock into an open window with a note attached, please, let's talk. When it broke a window, instead, Bob screamed at the man. The negotiator seized the chance to bond. Bob demanded money for his window, and the negotiator agreed. As they spoke, he learned Bob needed cash to bury Buster. The negotiator promised, and later delivered, the funds. Within two hours, Bob released the boys and gave up his weapon. Learn to deal with conflict. The reptilian part of your brain tells you to flee confrontation. For some people, conflict brings up very unpleasant feelings. Children who are traumatized by their parents bickering may avoid conflict as adults. And yet, adults who cannot deal with conflict are hostages. To be effective, leaders and supervisors must manage conflict. Rather than link conflict with negative emotions, view it as a learning and growth opportunity. 
Conflict is a natural component of relationships. People will disagree, particularly at work. The key is healthy dialogue, giving all those involved the freedom to express their opinions and keeping excessive emotion out of the equation. In real situations, conflict management and dialogue are crucial. For example, in a hostage negotiator's first attempts to bond with a criminal, the negotiator's primary objective is to secure the hostage's freedom. Sometimes, the hostage's actions make a big difference. In 2005, Brian Nichols killed four people at an Atlanta courthouse. A day later, he took Ashley Smith, a young widow and mom, hostage. He tied her up in her home, but as the hours passed, Smith got her captor to talk with her about major life issues, such as religion and family. She gave him medication and read to him from a book, The Purpose Driven Life. They connected when Nichols revealed that his son had been born the previous night. Smith told Nichols if he hurt her, her child would not have a mommy or daddy. During the night, Nichols untied Smith. In the morning, she made him pancakes. He released her peacefully. Bonding with him saved her life. Handling conflict at work. If an employee is having a particularly strong reaction to a conflict, rather than take it personally, examine the true cause of the individual's angst. Maybe he or she started the day with an argument, or has an ill parent or child. Maybe the employee is still angry about getting a ticket. Emotional reactions are rooted in broken bonds and loss. Ignoring conflict does not make it disappear. Like a wound that needs first aid, conflict requires attention or it worsens. Try to resolve conflicts with sensitivity. Simply unloading on someone who upset you will make the person retreat, and may trigger an equally emotional outburst aimed, this time, at you. A civilized approach works best. And check your timing. The end of a busy day is probably not the best time to approach your boss with a problem. You can resolve conflict only in an environment where people are encouraged to deal openly with differences. Your firm should advocate open communication, managers must be approachable and listen to employees. Negotiating, how to talk a good game. Good dialogue demands that you look the other person in the eye and avoid dominating the conversation. Say enough to get your point across and then allow room for a response. You have to listen. Good listeners rephrase what they've heard. Rather than lash back. Against reprovals and attack, thank the speaker for his or her valuable contribution to the discussion. Do not allow yourself to be held hostage by criticism or by your emotions. Effective negotiation requires dialogue e an exchange of meaningful ideas that conveys the party's positions. Dialogue should create a bond that deepens even if negotiations appear to be going badly. You may hear, no, from the other party while, in fact, you are just getting to know each other better and moving closer to agreement. Sometimes, you may feel as if your conversation is going nowhere. The other person is not really engaged in dialogue, is stalling and refuses to be honest. You're frustrated, and you feel as if you are being held hostage. Negotiation requires self-discipline. Consider police officers or prison guards who, despite vicious verbal assaults from perpetrators or convicts, do not retaliate. They maintain their self-respect and composure. They try not to take it personally. That's a great lesson everyone can learn.